Hello, I'm Jim Jenkins from Applied Technology Institute. I'm the founder and president of the company. Wanted to introduce you to some video samples from our courses. These video samples are the instructors who actually teach the course, giving you a brief description of what the course is intended to cover, what's unique about the course, and then you actually get to see them present five or six slides as part of the course to get a feel for the level. In addition, many of the courses we have on our website sample slides where you may get to see 20 to 50 slides from the course so that you can get a real feel for the technical content. Typically our courses start with the fundamentals, give you enough information that you can understand design trade-offs and things, attend to design review and follow what's going on, and then go on to hit some of the advanced topics all in typically a three or four days. Hello everyone, my name is Steve Weiss and I teach a three-day course in Antenna Array Fundamentals for ATI. And in this course uh, you will learn uh, basic antenna concepts and definitions. You can expect to learn the appropriate antenna for your application and factors that affect antenna array design for different antenna systems. And finally we conclude the course with uh, measurement techniques commonly used in anechoic chambers when actually characterizing anten antennas and antenna arrays in the array environment and actually the performance of the, the such arrays and antennas by themselves. So as part of my course content on the first day, I'll go over various types of antennas just from a, a macro standpoint so that we have some sense of how these fall into certain uh, defined categories. And to that end, I'll talk about wire antennas, I'll talk about aperture antennas, printed circuit antennas, optic-based antennas, antenna arrays, resonant antennas, broadband antennas, and then finally conclude this with electrically small antennas. Next. So wire antennas are just uh, what they say. For example, the classic uh, dipole antenna that I'm holding up here is certainly a wire antenna. And additionally, we can have uh, a loop antenna, as I'm holding that now. And so these are classic wire antennas. There's current circulating around the perimeter of the antenna or along the extent of the wire. And from that, we, we can ascertain what the radiated fields look like. Next. Another class of antennas would be the classic uh, horn antenna or maybe even a dish antenna. And so these are also examined and explained thoroughly in this course. And here's an example of an antenna that's uh, really an X-band horn antenna. And when we talk about these antennas, we'll explain things like the bandwidth, the beam width, uh, and maybe the application space for which they're suitable to be used. Next. Hatch antennas are very common and uh, useful for many applications. Many of the big advantages are they're very inexpensive to make. They can be made conformal to the, uh, the body of some kind of uh, a platform, like the wing of an aircraft or the side of a vehicle. And so they have many attractive features. And so again, in this course, we go through some of the trade-offs and why one would want to use a patch antenna as opposed to maybe a different type antenna. Next. Uh, there are space-based antennas or optics-based antennas where we would have, for example, a dish antenna uh, fed by a feed and a reflector, uh, commonly used, for example, in uh, satellite communications, and so, uh, or maybe even a lens antenna, as you see here on the bottom of the slide. And so some of the course content would discuss these uh, in further detail in subsequent lectures. Next. And then we would move on in day number two to antenna arrays. And we can take any element, a horn antenna, a dipole antenna, a loop antenna, place it in an array configuration, and then on the second day of the course, we examine the implications of putting an antenna in an array. What are mutual coupling effects? What are uh, scan blindness effects? What are the effects of uh, grading lobes? And how can we mitigate these uh, sometimes uh, adverse effects to optimize the performance of the array? Next. Broadly defined, uh, there are really uh, any antenna can be electrically small or even a resonant antenna. And uh, if it's a resonant antenna, for example, a half wave dipole, as I held up earlier, then the current distribution assumes like a cosine distribution over the extent of the antenna. And so these uh, physical length is about a half a wavelength. 
and we can have resin antennas, for example, a patch antenna, or even like a, a Yagi type array antenna. They're characterized by low to moderate gain, real input impedance, and uh, real part being the extent that it's uh, reasonable to connect it to a 50 ohm system, and uh, but a fairly narrow bandwidth. Broad band antennas tend to be frequently frequency independent, and uh, so that's a very nice feature. Here I show a spiral antenna and a log periodic uh, dipole array. These are characterized by low to uh, moderate gain, but the gain tends to be constant, and a real part of the input impedance is reasonable to match to. And the interesting thing about an antenna such as this is that the lower frequency, they tend to use the entire structure as the radiating mechanism. But as the frequency goes higher and higher, they tend to use less and less of the structure. So the aperture size tends to stay constant as the, the frequency increases, and that really accounts for the kind of constant gain over the broadband of the antenna. Next. Electrically small antenna, everything is relative to wavelength. So the same dipole antenna that's a half wavelength at, for example, uh, 600 megahertz, I can take the same dipole and excite this at a frequency of 30 megahertz, and now it becomes electrically small because the wavelength is so huge uh, on the order of 10 meters at that frequency. So the same antenna physical size that works at one frequency uh, is electrically small at others. And we can examine uh, in great detail, or enough detail to understand the basic concepts, the implication of small antennas. And we can do this from the aperture, from the standpoint of what's the aperture size of uh, an aperture antenna and the implications of beam width versus aperture size. And also uh, examine the so-called chew limit which is a fundamental constraint on the beam, the bandwidth of the antenna when the antenna is electrically small. Next. 